For model number two, we have the following assumptions. First, it is still continuous, meaning demand happens uh, at any point and end every point in time. Demand is still uniform. Supply is instantaneous, meaning the parameter B, which is the supply rate, is equal to infinity. And finally, shortages are allowed. If you look at uh, these uh, assumptions, uh, this is technically model number one, one where we assume that shortages are allowed. And in the same manner, we will uh, graph our uh, inventory level. Okay. So again, we have our x-axis and we also have our y-axis. And because shortages are allowed now, therefore, we will allow our inventory level, okay, our, our y-axis inventory level to go below zero as we move to the right. Okay? So again, we assume a, a, an arbitrary starting point. And because demand is uniform, this goes down uniformly or at a straight line, sorry. Once it reaches zero, what happens? Uh, because we, we will allow shortage, then we will, we will still continue to consume or to sell the inventory. And therefore, it will continue to move down up until a certain point. Okay? Now, uh, at this point, you will then decide that you will reorder. And how much will you reorder? You will reorder uh, Q again because Q is your reorder quantity. And therefore, from this point, it will shoot up. Okay? And, well, graphically, we can just show that this is Q. Now, from this point again, we will let uh, we will consume units, and therefore, this will again move down until it reaches this point again, and then it will uh, move up because we will order again. Okay, and the cycle continues. Now. If you look at this graph and you look at the, the, the cycles, what is repeating is this cycle. And therefore, this is our T. Okay? However, our T now is divided into two parts. This part we will call T1 and this part we will call T2. T1 is the time within the cycle where your inventory level is above zero, okay? Meaning you have inventory. T2, on the other hand, is the time in your cycle where you already have zero inventory and you are accumulating shortages. And as you accumulate shortage, you reach, you eventually decide at this point point to stop accumulating uh, shortages and to reorder uh, Q units, okay? Now, after reordering Q units and because you accumulated this much, no, this much uh, shortage, then let me denote this part of the graph to be S. And S is another variable in this case. What is S? S is the remaining uh, inventory no? after fulfilling fulfilling uh, shortage. Okay? So your order quantity is Q. The one on top of the x-axis is S. That means this part of the graph is, well, S minus Q. S minus Q is the negative value because S is smaller than Q. But if we get the absolute value of this, or, or in this case, Q minus S, no? Q minus S is the 
uh, shortage that you are willing to accumulate. Okay? Now, given this graph, let us now compute or formulate our total cost function. And remember, our total cost function will start with your total cost per cycle and then divide everything by cycle time. Okay? So your total cost per cycle is still the three, uh, well, actually four components now. Your, your fixed cost plus your variable cost plus your holding cost and because we are now allowing shortages shortage cost and we divide everything by your cycle time okay so your fixed cost again per cycle is still k because you are just uh, incurring a single fixed cost. Your variable cost is still the unit variable cost times your order. So CQ plus what is your holding cost? Your holding cost again is the cost that you incur because you are holding inventory. And when are you holding inventory given this graph? You are holding inventory when you are above at this part of the triangle. Okay? And eventually, later on, you are uh, holding shortage. No? You are sh holding shortage inventory at this part of the triangle okay so for the holding cost for the holding cost it is still the holding cost unit holding cost sorry it is still the unit holding cost h times the area under this triangle uh, this this line up until this point or essentially the area of this triangle so the area of that triangle is still one half base which is t1 times the height which is s plus the shortage cost is equal to the unit shortage cost p times the area of this red triangle and what is the area of this red triangle it is uh, one half base times what is the height the height this height is actually q minus s it's not s minus q because s minus q is the negative value on the y-axis but the height of this uh, triangle inverted triangle is the absolute value of this which gives us q minus s So we will divide everything by T. And this is our total cost function that is in terms of uh, that is in terms of how many variables? Actually there's a lot. Q, T1, T2, and T. Oh, by the way, sorry. There's also S. Okay, so Q, T1, S, T2, and T. Now, there, is, there are a lot of variables here. However, we can actually reduce uh, the number of variables. How? We will let T1 to be equal to s over a why if you look at t1 t1 is how long this part of the cycle is and if you imagine this part to be just the model one <clears throat> graph then this height divided by uh, the demand rate 
Now, the rate at which this line goes down is equal to the length of this cycle. And therefore, you have T1 is equal to S over A. In the same way, you have T2, and T2 in this case is the length of this inverted triangle. And in the same manner, T2 is equal to the height of this triangle, which is Q minus S, all over A. And because T1 plus T2 is equal to T, therefore we get an S over A plus Q minus S over A. What we will get is a T equals Q over A. And all we have to do now is to substitute these, uh, these equations into the, our main uh, objective function and what we will end up with is a total cost function in terms of two variables q and s and this is equal to k over t will give us a k over q c q over t will still give us a c plus h one half t one s over t will give us well h times one half times T1, which is S over A, times S, uh, uh, all over T, which is divided by Q over A, or multiplied by the reciprocal A over Q. Okay? And then for the shortage cost part, we have P times 1 half, times t2. What is t2? t2 is q minus s over a times q minus s again. And then again divided by t or multiplied by the reciprocal a over q. Fixing this, we get an ak over q plus ac. For this one, we cancel a and we get h well plus h s squared over 2 q and then plus p quantity q minus s squared we cancel again a all over 2 q And this is our total cost function in terms of Q minus S. Unfortunately, there is no way for us to reduce or substitute S no, out of the equation. Why? Because as you can see, S is actually an independent variable. You can freely decide on how much S you want. Remember that S is the remaining inventory after fulfilling your shortage. So for example, let's say your Q is uh, some random number 500. So you, you're ordering uh, 500 every time. You can independently decide to say that S is equal to, let's say, 300. And because S is equal to 300, consequently, shortage you are allowing shortage to be equal to 200. Or your inventory level, you are allowing to reach the value negative 200. 